y'all ready? Good. Thank you for being here. For those of you who are new here to my page, I am Goddess Just Be. I help people in the areas of mind, body, and soul. Um, mindfulness trumps all because the spiritual is 99.9% .9 of all that there is, right? But we talk about physical, and today we're going to step into the physical because a lot of people um, have issues with stumbling blocks trying to get there. So I create a balance in between from the physical to the spiritual, and I call that your little insurance, like, right? Manipulating the energy and going towards the things that help you feel good, help you with your faith, will help with what you're knowing, help you reprogram your subconscious mind to begin to know that you are health and wellness. And so we've been talking about eating for your blood type. Why is this important? Because there's nothing new underneath the sun and everything have memory, right? Everything in the physical reality is vibrating at a frequency. It's all energy, frequency, and vibration. And so our blood has memory, the memory of our ancestors, the memory of the foods that was already eaten, you know, because there's nothing new under the sun. Memory of the bloodline. And because it has that memory, it knows as soon as you put something in your mouth, it knows whether that item is beneficial or not because it creates a chemical reaction upon contact because all things are energy, frequency, and vibration. And so we create chemical reactions by the foods we eat interacting with our blood type. This is why blood type is so important. It's so important that you know your blood type. And so there are different blood types, O, A, A, B, and B. And so the O is kind of like the original blood type in the physical reality. The gods, the Anunnaki gods, the first man to kind of like experience this thing called life in physical form. Every other blood type has to do with other um, groups of people in recreation, mixing and matching, blood being tainted, this thing and that thing, however you want to digest that thing. It's just a bloodline that's vibrating at a, another frequency underneath the O, because that's the hierarchy of all of them, right? Hello, hello, thank you for being here. So today we're gonna do a lot of question and answers and to help people, no matter what your blood type, then there will be stuff, you know, questions and answers to help you along your journey. I offer in my on my website, this here is my website, so the pub.org. I offer meal plans once you know what your blood type is so you can consume highly beneficial foods for your blood type. So you can activate your dormant DNA so that you can experience health and wellness. You can have mental clarity and so that you can become more conscious than you, you know, like your ancestors were. So you could be honoring your father and mother so your days could be long on the earth because truly your father and mother or those that stem from your bloodline okay hey monique how you doing today so on my website on the pub.org i have meal plans available i have detoxes available all of these things are beneficial for all blood types right <laughs> i group them together like for example the uh sustained detox and the alchemist oil is the first item on my website and it's grouped together as a, um, as a bundle in order to detox the body from parasites, in, in order to detox the body from the autoimmune disease, um, disease and disharmony that you may have gotten because you've been eating outside of your blood type for so long. To get there, you will go either to my website, sawtheearthpub.org, or my bio. This right here is what we call a bio. And on the bio, my website is there, so it'll be easy for you to just click on the website here so you don't mess up typing it, click on the bold website and it'll bring you to my homepage. When you get to my homepage, at the very top of my homepage on my website, you'll see three black boards. And these three black boards represent three bundles that I put together. One would be a, um, a detox for parasites, old fecal matter, cellular cleansing, if you're sick, if you are, have irritable bowel syndrome, if your vision is compromised, things like that, autoimmune um, disease, in disharmony, halitosis, um, yeast infections, your hair falling out and all of that, this and that, the third, those type of things, you click on the first option. If you just want the meal plan, that's the second option. If you want the meal plan bundle and um, help with losing weight, that's going to be the third option. So I'll put those together for you if you want to do that or go that route. Everybody else, let's get started. Thanks for listening. <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha.
I had to get that out of the way. All right. First question, common question. How do I find out my blood type? You go to Amazon, amazon.com, and you're going to be entering Eldon, E-L-D-O-N, Eldon at Home Kit. Somebody type that in the comment for me. Eldon, E-L-D-O-N. Get to know yourself because getting to know yourself is getting to know God. So once you know your blood type, then you can find out where you fit within these questions and answers that I'm going to be um, talking about today. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So now we got that out of the way. That's the first question that was on my um on my list. Somebody over here, could you put Eldon, E-L-D-O-N on this page too? Eldon, E-L-D-O-N. That's where you go when you get to Amazon. You enter that and you find a kit, very inexpensive. You can take the test at home, three to five minutes tops. And thank you, I appreciate that, Candy. And now you know your blood type. Now you're empowered. Now you could know if you were to purchase the meal plan, you know which meal plan to purchase, right? Here we go. The first question that I want to um, answer is, my partner is an A and I'm a O. How do we prepare meals to help, you know, to be beneficial for both? And I personally have that issue here, not with an A though. We have A's and B's here in this here family. And to prepare meals, I would simply say the answer to that question is, is, is the fact that people worry about um, the impossible and what seems like the impossible, but there are more than 200 foods listed for each diet and many of them are crossing board. So if you were to get the, so if you have more than one blood type, you would be downloading the um, all blood types meal plan and not in that you compare them because it's less expensive if you get all blood types if you get an a and a b you're gonna be paying more so you might as well get all four and maybe you could use the other um two for something else i don't know anyway you will sit there you compare you will compare yours and your husband for example and you'll see that they are vegetables they are meat and there are seasons that go across the board and you use them more often than not and stop making excuses to be unrealistic and you know and, and try to cook in two three four meals at one time you're gonna wear yourself out now i do it sometimes because i don't be wanting like the uh o's bean i want a bean that's better for me right or that tastes more delicious to me so with that in mind maybe i'll make two types of red beans and put the common herbs in both of them that we both share to make the meat preparing the meal easier and faster right that's the first question all right moving on the next question Why is it that when eating for the blood for the, your blood type, there's a different proportion recommendation according to your ancestry line, right? So the answer to this here is the portion recommendation is really taking into account the problems of different people, you know, different races with, with that they have with foods. So for example, O's. O's on the meal plan are going to be, the black O's rather, on the meal plan are going to be having, able rather to consume less egg than like a Caucasian on the, but as far as the meal plan is concerned. Because African Americans, they're, or even with milk, because for example, African Americans are more less I mean, more lactose intolerant than other cultures, like, right, other people, other races of people. So, like, when you're looking or talking to a Caucasian person about cutting back on milk, they're looking at you some kind of way because they, you know, they don't get affected by milk like the black man or woman would. And it has to do with the problems that our ancestors or our, I don't want to say problems. It has to do with the fact that our, during the time, that, you know, because we all, everything is energy, frequency, and vibration. So we all came forth at different seasons, right? 
And so in that season where the black Anunnaki type blood type line was in the face of the earth, they wasn't walling out on no 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 animal of um, milk and from animals, right? But the ones that had a lighter hue that happened to be O's as well, they were. And so their ancestral line did not get affected. They digest things differently, you know. They tolerate, they have different tolerances for milk, more of a tolerance for milk, more of a tolerance for egg than the black O. And that that's not just O. This is this is for A, B, and A B. It has to do with 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 your ancestral line too as it pertains to to race so to speak because that matters so black o's have a higher intolerance to dairy and eggs than the caucasian o does that's the whole point I don't really be feeling comfortable talking about, just to be transparent, talking about the colors and stuff because I don't really be wanting to go down that, that, that path because that's another kind of TikTok. I understand that color, you know, to an extent with diet really does matter, but I like to speak from a place where I'm including everybody because all spectrums of light represent the totality of God, you see? Next question. I'm a type B and my meat choices are very strange to me. <laughs> Lamb, for example, rabbit, which I never eat. Why no chicken? Bees struggle with this. I'm a bee and I'll be honest with you that in the beginning of my journey, I did do. I did do. Like, I'm not even rabbit. No lamb. I, as a bee, I actually don't like meat, to be honest with you. To be perfectly honest, I don't like meat. Most meat stink to me. I'm just being honest. So, <laughs> the elimination of chicken as a blood type B, I'm only talking to the bees here, is like the toughest adjustment. Because of our culture, because, you know, I'm black in physical reality. Hey, hey, Miss Being Soul, thank you for being here. You buy it on Amazon. Yeah, Elden at Home Kit on Amazon. And I'm black right now in this physical reality. That's what I chose to come forth as. And in my culture, you know, the people that I, you know, I call family here in this reality, they love me. I mean, chicken, fried chicken, you know. I'm from New Orleans on top of that. Um, Popeye's two-piece spicy white is really something that I came up on, right? But the interesting thing about it is for the longest, it was inflaming my body. And I didn't never, I never could have pinpointed it to be chicken. But blood type B, that's like the toughest thing to get over. But we be conditioned to think that chicken is healthier than beef and other meats when it is not. Because um, chicken contains a lectin inside of the muscle that when blood type B consumes it, it caused instant inflammation. And not only with that inflammation come, you know, acids, because that's what inflammation is. It, it brings your body to an ascetic state of being. But not only are you ascetic now, but your serotonin decreases now. Now your stress is increasing. Cortisone levels are increasing. Dopamine um, is, is decreasing. You get tired, you get sluggish, and you get depressed. So you think about the chicken and you ask yourself, is the chicken worth it? Is the chicken worth me having to stay in the darn house all for the rest of the day, you know, with a headache, with, with depressing, depressed feelings, you know, cause once you really pinpoint it, you realize it's the chicken. But the thing about it is some people are so used to being inflamed that they don't know what anti-inflammatory feel for their body. So they think, oh, ain't nothing wrong with me. Some people so used to be kind of like low key depressed and sad so they think it's normal. You know, I wake up kind of sluggish. I don't never want to go to work. So they get to this place or this state of being where they don't ever do stuff. Anyway, they don't ever sleep good anyway. So they, they ever think that nothing is wrong. So on the bright side, for a blood type B, you can eat turkey. 
and a large variety of seafood. And so turkey has wings. And so turkey, you know, turkey is, is gonna be less inflammatory. It's, it's, it's a neutral, it's a neutral thing for um, the blood type Bs. So go toward neutral. Neutral doesn't necessarily mean bad. Neutral does not necessarily mean bad. It just means that it's not highly beneficial. And so if you want to tweak your diet and eat for your blood type and you're a blood type B, leave the chicken alone and just go over there to the turkey and live happily ever after. Chicken be, be holding us hostage, you know? And so the next question here, talk on a positive. Mm -hmm. Chicken is man made, yeah. Definitely, definitely it is. Yeah, let's see some. Okay. So, wait, let me get out of there. Okay. So the next question is, um, what does neutral mean? That leads up to the next question that I have on this year. So. The three categories we have, when you're eating right for your blood type, you'll notice that I put on the meal plan, the link is in the bio for your blood type. And, um, and to answer you, uh, is that Kale? I'm Kale5, talk on A positive. If, um, if you'd like, you can download your A positive and you have everything in hand. And then you'll really know or be empowered. I'm just answering general questions. We're not going on a, over a specific blood type today. We're answering general questions to include everybody. So maybe you can visit when I talk on A's only, or you can purchase your meal plan and then you have what you need. So what does neutral mean? Are those foods good for me? So neutral doesn't necessarily mean bad. There are three categories. Like I was saying, highly beneficial, neutral, and the things that you should avoid. Okay? So highly beneficial are going to be the things that are, you know, the highest. According to your blood type, it's going to help you with that ulcer. It's going to help to reverse all that inflammation, the autoimmune disease, increase microbial um, diversity, uh, increase digestive enzymes for whatever blood type you are, help you lose weight and even increase hydrochloric acid in your gut, right? So the highly beneficial foods, you can look at it like this here, they're acting as if they're medicine in your body based upon your blood type. Yeah, the ones that are the ones to avoid, they're acting like poisons in your body based upon your blood type. So you wanna leave them alone. So for example, I was just talking about the bees with chicken. Well, chicken gonna be poison for you if you keep on doing it. I just told you to go to the turkey but if you choose not, just remember what we're gonna say. A whole head make a soft ass. And you could choose that room. So the neutral foods, um, they're simply acting as food. So they don't have any special, you know, benefits. They're good for you in this in the sense that do they do contain some nutrients that your body need, but they ain't healing your body. You know? They just they just neutral. So you could give life to something that's neutral by adding highly beneficial things, like adding highly beneficial herbs to it, adding highly beneficial oils to it, to kind of like transform the energy of it to make it, you know, more useful because you didn't add it, you know, you didn't enriched it, so to speak, right? You're welcome. I replace my meat with mushrooms or, or walnuts. Oh, okay, that's cool. You know what I love? Some fried portobello mushrooms. Oh my God, the big ones? Yeah, I love them. And you season them like you do um, fried chicken. Oh my God, it's really good. I used to eat chicken all the time, thinking it was healthy. Now I'm beef every day. I lost 25 pounds. Will you go ahead on with your baby self? I'm so happy for you. Is that Lorna? I'm so happy for you. That's a beautiful thing. And so, let's move on. So, oh, this is a perfect question next. Will I lose weight on a blood type diet? We was just talking about um, losing weight. We was just congratulating somebody from losing weight. And now that we're gonna have a weight question right here. And there are recommendations for weight loss on my website. I'm clapping for you, losing that weight. 
they are recommendations based upon your blood type because you could download the instant cheat codes for for weight loss right and so these foods are eliminating imbalances they are helping you to lose weight because they're highly beneficial for you they help you to lose weight but really the highly beneficial ones are going to help you too it's just that the ones that's on a weight loss cheat code is going to speed up because they are pretty much foods that are designed to make that weight just fall off of you designed to retract that stomach designed to pull a tight neck skin back too right so you can't go wrong you can't go wrong so your metabolism what happens when you get on the um the uh highly beneficial meal plan your metabolism will uh adjust and so it's gonna adjust to what your normal build and body you know body is and so you instantly burn calories more efficiently because your digestive system will begin to process nutrients properly because you, you know in the beginning you probably wasn't you know in the beginning you probably was only going to the bathroom maybe once or twice a week and so as your digest just your digestive enzymes replenish and begin to break up your food better and your hydrochloric acid returns this year is gonna um this process is gonna allow you to absorb your nutrients all over again release waste you know better and so now it's going to be reducing the water retention too so basically you will be losing weight immediately and that is why i honestly don't let go of my coconut oil i'm a blood type b i'm blood type b and coconut oil is like a saturated fat right and so when we have these saturated fats, they're not really good. Like for example, a I wouldn't suggest that they consume like swallow coconut oil because they already have a problem or a B even. I wouldn't consume a or a B to digest coconut oil because they already have high mucus production. O's and B O's and B's don't. So me being a B. I do consume coconut oil and the reason why coconut oil isn't highly beneficial is because coconut oil has a lot of those saturated fats but the reason why I consume it is because like I was telling you all I don't like to consume that much of meat and so when I consume it those saturated fats it's not an overabundance and it is not hurting me at all coconut oil was a staple in my 90 day fast when I got to day number 38 and I was hungry on another level, I would eat a spoon of coconut oil being that it's health, it's those saturated fats. It gave my body something to use as full, as fuel in a sense, because I wasn't chewing and digesting anything. If I don't consume coconut oil, I'm not condoning you to incorporate this. I'm just sharing this for those people that may be skinny and, you know, maybe a B or A. I mean a B or O. If I don't consume coconut oil, I get really, really skinny because I'm not eating those so-called fats in meat, the animals, like the average, maybe black or average B, you know, could eat and that are actually highly beneficial. And you know, like the rabbit and all that, I'm not I'm not about to eat no rabbit. I don't care how highly beneficial it is for my blood type. I, I'm not eating no rabbit. But that's my preference though and so i'm just manipulating energy and doing something else in between so that's the reason why also why coconut oil isn't highly beneficial it's the saturated fats but outside of that coconut oil does still carry or have amino acids it's still anti-inflammatory it's antiviral anti-parasitic anti-microbial anti-inflammatory anti-fungal it can pass the lipid coating of viruses too. It does have its benefits, but one of its negative ben um, things as far as consuming is concerned, is it's gonna, it's gonna be a lot of saturated fats. All right, y'all with me? Are y'all there? I don't see nobody talking. Y'all listening? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that question coming up too. Hybrid foods. It's coming up, it's on this list. What about the Oh my goodness, y'all be just wanting to eat all kind of things. <laughs> Serenity. Oh, y'all listening? Okay, good. I see people talking. <laughs> I'm, I'm, 
that kind of stuff kind of like makes me um kind of like want to throw up in the back of my mouth actually just talking about it <laughs> but no it's not highly um beneficial it, dear, it's not highly beneficial for the bees okay so let's um move on let me drink some water because i got a little nauseous talking about the meats that's nasty to me I mean, you just think about a little bunny rabbit. You think about a turtle. I mean, they, the bunny rabbit just hopping up and down and like the turtle is moving really, really slow. Just leave the thing alone. <laughs> Let him get across the street. It took him forever just to get across the street and you're gonna pick him up and eat him and put him in a pot or whatever you do. What you gonna do? You gonna boil him? Is his back gonna be the bowl? Like, what are you gonna do? Like, I don't know, some things just like really a little too much. Well, I don't even want to think about that. <laughs> All right. So, um, uh, so we talked about um, the diet, about losing weight on a diet. There was a question up in here that's coming up. Um, wait, which one was that? Let's see. Did I go too far up here? I just saw it. I don't know. Y'all didn't do all of that. Um... We're here taking it all in. I'm listening. Okay. Leave animals alone. Yeah, bunnies. I could never do that. Yeah, like why? Like what is wrong with them? The bunnies are so cute. Wait, I missed it. Here we go. Okay. All right, I'm coming up with that one. Good. So, I have heart problems. And I've been told, um, well, I pretty much just covered that one. I've been told um, to totally avoid fat and cholesterol. I'm a type O. Can I eat meat? Yes. The heart problem issue is, is more stemming from your eating of wheat than it is of you eating meat. Don't get those two mixed up. So it's the grains, not the meat which are the cardiovascular corporates for type O, grains. Now, almost everybody who is attempted or attempting to prevent heart disease is advised to go on a diet based largely on complex carbs. But it's the lean meat actually makes the O's thrive gives them energy, gives them serotonin, makes them feel good. So it's not about taking away the meat. It's about avoiding wheat. The same thing that knocks out the O's hydrochloric acid in they gut. The wheat, it sits there and becomes mold, right? It sits there and put that hydrochloric out and it just build up. Every time they eat it, it is building up more, more yeast, more fungus, Sitting up in there, not being digested, sitting in the same spot. If you're sitting in the same spot, nothing ain't circulating. So that's causing inflammation. Inflammation equals acids, right? Inflammation too long in the gut can cause leaky gut, peptic ulcers, right? Toxicity. So toxicity up in here is why O's end up with thyroid issues the most and peptic ulcers. And it brings it back to them so-called carbs. Gotta get my carbs. Gotta get my carbs. No, you don't, O. Oh. You got to get your meat. You got to get your meat. <laughs> and so not just um, any meat. So you want to have organic, you know, meat. You know, you want to clean your meat. So the next thing, type O. I'm type O and I don't want to eat meat. <laughs> I don't want um, much fat in my diet. So here's the thing. High protein does not automatically mean that it's high in fat. Especially <laughs> if you're avoiding the heavy meats, right? Even though it's more expensive, they have free range meats that have been raised without excess use of uh, antibiotics and without those chemicals. So lean game or domestic animals that was grazed on alfalfa and other grasses 
Those are the meats that I'm talking about. If you can't afford those meats, choose the lenient cuts available, right? And remove all the asset fats while you're cooking. But don't think that you are going to try as the O after you clean up that gut with all that hydrochloric acid without giving your body something to, to um, some way to put that hydrochloric acid to use is what I'm saying. Because your vegetables ain't going to do that alone. Your fruit, some of your fruit that you think, if you're not abiding by the meal plan, some of those fruits for you olds going to tear you up. Because you, when, you, when your hydrochloric acid replenish and it meets another fruit that's an acid, them two going to set you on fire. So you might want to eat here and there. You might want to find a meat that you do like. That doesn't mean that you have, since you're a meat eater, it doesn't mean that you have to indulge in all of the meats, but find one that do, that you do like. And, and, and remember your portion size too. Remember portion size, that's important. Okay? That's very important. Yeah. And another thing, the fat in the oil rich fish, cause you have some fish and seafood, right? Is composed of um, those omega-3 fatty acids which seem to promote lower cholesterol in healthier hearts so you can be missing out on that if you don't want no kind of meat not even the seafood so pay attention to consuming um, for the O's it's so important that you pay attention to consuming your highly beneficial oils for that same reason too because your oils actually help to lubricate. I put the at-home portion on everybody's seven-day meal plan. And it's right there on page three where it says, if you are sick, start here. I put the oil that's highly beneficial for your blood type, your highly beneficial herbs, and the alchemist oil, which is anti-parasitic, and a sweetener of choice to kind of like give it a, a prebiotic um, so you have beneficial bacteria after you digest it. Now keep in mind by consuming that concoction, you are lubricating your processing center, which is your liver. You know how people be having backed up bad livers and stuff like that. Toxins sit up in the air. First of all, it's it's the oil is penetrating to your blood because the blood and the food that you eat, aka the oil that you're about to consume, creates a chemical reaction. Since it's highly beneficial, it's gonna be sending a signal throughout the body that hey. She's giving us something highly beneficial, our vital minerals to help us clean house up in here. Then it's going to ship it over there to the processing center, which is your liver. And so your liver or your gallbladder duct will begin to loosen up and release toxins so they can be expelled via your bowel. So it is so important that you use your highly beneficial oils when if you not eating the meat or cutting back on your meat, at least drizzle some on your fish, you know, your seafood that is highly beneficial for you. At least drizzle some on maybe your salad with the lettuce and vegetables that's highly beneficial for you. Or put your oil on inside of your teas. You have herbal teas that are really highly beneficial for you. Put some of your highly beneficial oil up in there. That way, for those of you that have inflammation, irritable bowel syndrome, that have um, uh, liver, um, fatty liver, that have kidneys that are sluggish, all of them acids and toxins will be lubricated. The Lord and small intestines will be lubricated. So you can go to the bathroom more regular. The at-home herbal portion by itself is designed for you to actually be taken in the beginning three times a day for the first week then wean off to two times, then the next week wean off to one time to get everything, the processing center and the other organs lubricated so they can function properly and get rid of them acids out your body. But a lot of y'all been sleeping on that and, and you can only take a person to the water. You can't make them drink. I'm just here to share news with you. I'm old and I wasn't a big meat eater, but now all things I have to eat beef. <laughs> now of all the things I have to eat beef oh yeah I don't like beef but I don't really care for that many meats anyway but beef the reason why I don't care for it and I can't eat it is because I can't bullshit 
I don't like the fact that I can't bullshit. No, I need to put some I need to put some alchemist oil in some water and some lemon on that thing and some um, coconut vinegar and strip it. But you can't do all of that to be. Because, <laughs> you know, the texture of it or whatever. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, yeah, we, gonna, we about to get to the hybrid foods and the GMOs. Um, let's see. Let's see. Um, next question that we're going to go over. Will eating canned foods hurt my diet? Well, commercial canned food, think about it like this, it's dead food. Uh, <laughs> I haven't had canned food in a long, 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 long time. But canned food is commercial food. It's subject to um, high heat and pressure. So now most of the vitamin content is being lost because it's under pressure, right? Especially the antioxidants. So then they become soggy at the same time. They're typically um, lower in fiber too, so you're not going. They're not going to help you go to the bathroom. Another better alternative would be to choose maybe frozen foods instead of canned. You know, because if you think about what they have frozen, maybe, I mean, in the can, like it may be what green beans in the can. Well, they sell green peas in the frozen section. You know, so go for frozen because. Um, Freezing doesn't really change the nutritional content, the nutritional content of the foods, but canned food is smothering. Just think about, you know, it, shoot. I mean, I guess that's not a, the happiest thought, but if you was in the can and you couldn't breathe, <laughs> you wouldn't have no light bulbs either, you know. So, next question: Should I take a multivitamin every day on the blood type diet? Yeah. I don't have a problem giving up chicken, but I don't want to give up turkey. I'm blood type O. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bless your heart. Y'all listening over here? Let's see. Uh. <laughs> yes, indeed. Let's see. Oh, y'all talking to each other. Yeah. Okay, thank you for covering up that man made stuff over there for me. Yeah, you'd be surprised what man made. Yeah. Yeah, I'm glad y'all know that. So, we did the canned food. The next thing, should I take a multivitamin every day while on the black type diet? I don't deem that necessary at all because now you're getting all your vital minerals. Unless you're one of them people that have an illness of some sort, you're pregnant of some sort, you're, you, I mean, you know, you're pregnant and you know you are, you're heavy smoke, um, a smoker because don't just eat it for your blood type some people some smokers may be doing it but still inhaling a whole bunch of smoke which is really not helpful for the lungs but hey everybody has a different um place in the journey or maybe if you um have a lot of physical activity you know and you're burning you're burning so much of fuel maybe a, a multi um vitamin would be but if you are actually experiencing good health uh, you should. You don't need any any supplements on the um, eating for your blood type diet because you're getting everything now. Finally, once you get over that hurdle of lubricating your organs by your highly beneficial oils, of of detoxing mucus by your lemons and key limes, things like that, and you're drinking your your water that I teach how to manipulate with your sodium bicarbonates and your proper Celtic salt. <clears throat> you don't need no vitamin. Celtic salt alone is eighty. 80 plus minerals, your your um your iodine, your your sea vegetables, that be like over 102 minerals. You know, you self to salt, you also get your electrolytes from, you know, you cleaning your organs with your lemon and your key lime, you good in that area. It's just that you gotta stick to it because you gotta get rid of the old fecal matter, the old stuff gotta die out, your stomach lining gotta re, re I mean shed and replenish, and you renew your organs. You don't need no supplements no more. Now you're finally in alignment. Okay. The what is the oil of choice? I and this kind of like goes like across the board. I prefer that uh, olive oil. I'm talking about cold pressed extra virgin. 
be the oil of choice, like to be diluted in the alchemist oil, for example, the anti-parasitic oil that I sell on my website. And I prefer that, and I actually put it on the top label of the oil itself. Wait, I got I got them right here, just in case you want to know those that don't know what it is. So the alchemist oil is something. Do I have it even? Yeah, I feel one. The alchemist oil is something that I um that I make. It's an actual uh, oil with oreg of oregano and clove mixed together. And the directions are for you to dilute it in a carrier oil. And I say on the um, ingredients or the label right here to dilute it in a teaspoon of um, olive oil, about five drops to you know take it as antibiotic, use it internally or externally, or whatever you're trying to do with it, oil pulling with it. And so I would say olive oil because that's the most um, tolerant and benefit, and it has beneficial fats in olive oil, right? As a mono unsaturated oil, it has positive effect on your arteries and on your heart. So that's why olive oil would be the best. And, it, and so we were talking about earlier coconut oil; it has a lot of saturated fats. And so it could it could um, increase mucus production. So the less processed the oil is, the better quality it's going to be. So you're paying attention to the fact that it's unrefined, cold pressed, and extra virgin. It should have like a little green hint to it. And um, oils run rancid when they are heated up too much. Just think about the fact that or or extra virgin oil is extra virgin. You can't put too much fire to aversion on the stove or in the bedroom. That'll help you remember. <laughs> okay. So here we go. Somebody asked this question here. Should I avoid GMO food? I would say yes. And what I would mean by that is because sometimes it's a GMO item that you probably don't really realize that it is. But what I mean, and, and then other times that they have GMO items that some blood type can actually benefit from, like for example, the AIDS, they could eat some of them GMO things and not have any issue with it, right? It'll be deemed less um, nutritious for a O or a B, but an A is only highly beneficial food choice. So based upon your, your blood type, just generally speaking for all blood types, when it comes to GMO, what I'm talking about is seedless. For example, watermelon. A lot of people like the fact that they have seedless watermelon. And they like it because that seedless watermelon is so sweet and they don't have to spit out the seed. But I would say that seeded watermelon is the one that is going to tackle that uric acid that build up in them kidneys that lactic acid build up in them kidneys. That's gonna also, the seeded one, clean out your large and small intestines and your livers. The seeded one gonna help with so many things because it's working with your body. Seeded watermelon, the natural one. It even helps with blood flow. All the way down to the green, um, um, the rind of the watermelon itself. Putting in putting that rind inside of a commercial blender if you have one, and using and digesting that pulp if you are um, a man would actually help with erectile dysfunction. But we're talking about the seeded one. We ain't talking about yeah, gold for the two, right? Good for the two, right? Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So we ain't talking about the seedless one. Because the seedless one ain't gonna have all of them, 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 them benefits. So the answer is yes, you should avoid genetically modified foods. Genetically engineering often involves moving a lectin molecule from one species to another. Because lectins are molecules that interact with your blood types, an okay food can easily become one to avoid. Okay? So. Choose organic. And when I say organic, I don't mean just go for the expensive kind. When I say organic, I'm saying the seeded one. Choose organic instead, the one with the seed. And so now they borrow this here molecule 
but that seed less one now is sweeter yeah it's more sugar in it that's why it's sweeter that's why people that have crazy diets they like it because it's feeding that yeast that they already have it's feeding them parasites that they already have inside of them then parasites want more sugar so that's why you're going to like the taste of it better but somebody that has a cleaner diet like myself that's too much sugar i can't i can't tolerate no seed less watermelon that ain't no minerals and i can taste it you get to a place in your journey where you've cleaned up your body so much that you could taste the substance of things or the lack thereof i could literally in my physical reality because i'm in tune with my body I can literally put something to my tongue because instantly that's where the chemical reaction takes place and I'll know if it's beneficial for me or if it's not. Meaning I know if it's seeded or not. I know if it's organic or not because my body gives me an indicator based upon me being able to taste and see. This is how I, this is another way you see here through taste. So I'm tasting and I'm seeing, I'm observing, I'm I'm within, I'm connected with that thing because it is sending a signal to my blood. And I feel what it's sending to my blood because I have a high tolerance to lectins as a blood type B. And on top of that, I'm in, in balance with myself. I know myself in the spiritual realm. So on top of that, I know as soon as I put anything to my tongue. Now, then, because I practice mindfulness, I have the, the mindfulness though to say, oh, well, I'm going to eat it anyway. And I'm going to bless this food based upon mindfulness to change the frequency of it, to make it beneficial for me. No, 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 fool. You step up to my level if I want to, but if it don't taste good, like for example, I could, anybody can manipulate energy like for pork. Pork is not something that anybody should be consuming. Like, right. As far as blood type is concerned. That's the physical. But remember, I always teach you 99.999% of this is spiritual. So you can trump any of these things that I'm saying to you with mindfulness. But when you get to this place where you understand the connection with the cells in your blood, oftentimes and not, you don't want to because you didn't already master this thing, this thing. So when I smell pork, when I smell bacon, to me, the way that my program is, is this that it is beneath me, so to speak. It has a stench about it that because I have this high self-concept, because I honor my temple, I don't want it in my body. And so if somebody were to try to trick me, like for example, I went out to a restaurant and somebody that was at the table, the group of us that was together, they had ordered something. And this wasn't really a trick. This was a waiter getting the meals mixed up. They ordered something and they asked for pork to be in it. And I ordered that same um, thing, but I asked for another meat to be in it. I don't know, maybe turkey or whatever. Anyway, I bit into this item and I was like, no, this, this not mine. But what really happened is I was connected to my inner beam. I smelled the stench of it. As soon as I put it on my tongue, I got the chemical reaction immediately. I didn't even chew it. I just spit it out and I was like, oh, I'm sorry, but I know this is not mine. And in, 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 in my mind, I can say this part out loud. I said, I know damn well it ain't mine because it stank. <laughs> so you get to that place. Once you clean, it's almost like a smoker. Once you get off of the cigarettes, now you don't want to be around people with the stench of the cigarette. Well, that's how I get away with pork now. And so nobody can, can cook something and be like, ah, oh, you just ate pork. They can't do that to me. <laughs> they can't do that to me because I'm going to know. I'm going to know. Y'all getting this? Some olive oil states that you can use for stir frying. I'm confused because stir frying is high temp. No olive oil should be used at high temp. If they say that, don't buy the olive oil. Buy the one that's in a glass bottle. Olive oil is so, um, the people that make real pure and delicate olive oil, they would never say that thing. So that could be very well an oil that they mixed with some other high heating point oil and it ain't 100% olive oil because you could get bamboos or like that with your olive oil because all olive oil ain't real. To um, test the realness of it, you want to pay attention to these three things. That is unrefined cold pressed extra virgin. That it has a, a date on it, you know, the date that it, you know, it was pressed. 
and like a signature. That's like the signature stating or statement. The date that it was pressed and kind of like the um, the country that made it because the real ones, they back up because they take pride in the fact that they took their time to create the purest form of an olive oil. So you look for a date, you look for um, you look for a signature, you look for you know where it came from, like France or whatever, Italy or wherever they whatever they put on the label, because they take pride and it has to be in a glass bottle. And if you say something about it, it could be heated heated at a high temp, you put that one thing, that thing down. Uh uh, we ain't fooling with the foolery because it's delicate, no high temp, no. Saute maybe a little onion for a couple of seconds. Yeah, you could do something like that. But no fine, no uh, portobello mushroom, deep frying, no catfish and none of that. Uh-uh. I would never use that oil just because they say that. Because they don't. that means they don't take pride in it. And a real prideful um, um, vineyard that presses um, real delicate oils would never say that. Would never. <laughs> okay? Yeah. So, um... Let me see. I want to make sure I caught up on this here. Uh, let's see. The bees don't make honey. Bees are man-made. Honey is all sugar. But, yeah. we about, You know, they have a question up in here about honey. You know, some blood types actually could ha handle honey. You know, in some areas you go to, for example, the honey, if based upon your blood type being able to handle it, because it's not something that you, everybody got to avoid the honey in that new land that you go to like when i came out here in arizona this local honey would have helped me kind of like migrate better as far as adjusting to you know the atmosphere kind of like tasting it and, and allowing it to flow in my bloodstream you know all of the pollen and everything out here allowing it to flow in my bloodstream so i could get acclimated with being in a new state or a place of being versus being in new orleans but yeah it's not it's man-made and yeah i see what you're saying but if you think about the hieroglyphics they were bees and honey <laughs> on the walls so i think about my culture so yeah it's not going to be good for everybody but I, I doubt very seriously if my ancestors would have took the time to have the Egyptian hieroglyphics walking around with little, um, it was like little, it was like they was holding the briefcases, like and they had little honey dripping or drizzling for, from it. Now it could very well be akin to agave too, but they had bees on it too, and bees are highly connected. Bees, bees are very intelligent. Bees are, um, <laughs> they migrate because based upon like the electromagnetic fields in the universe. They are very smart in even protecting the queen bee. They have this, this, this heightened sense of spirituality. They know, they can sense your energy. They don't, when you are like, I don't want to say chosen because I don't like to say, um, to make anybody feel less than, but I guess when you are in alignment and you're walking through your and you open your eyes and you're walking in your total purpose a bee a bee will flock to you but it would not sting you it will flock to you because of your essence of purity but it ain't gonna sting you though so yeah i, I see what you're saying but there's more to the bees than that yeah there's more to the bees than that so let's say um so we talked about avoiding the genetically modified foods uh, what else? What other questions? Mm. Oh, I appear to be allergic or reactive to something that's highly beneficial. What do I do? Don't eat it. Don't eat it. In the beginning, a lot of people be talking about all of the stuff that they alerted to. That could very well be because your digestive enzymes haven't returned and replenished yet. Um, but don't force yourself, you know, like for example for peanuts if you are highly allergic to the peanuts And you know it's on your meal plan and you swell up in your throat. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't swell up your throat now Stay away from them, but I would just be bluntly honest with you if it's highly beneficial for your blood type I feel as if that is a level of toxicity because I know so many people from being exposed to people that needed healing all of my life 
that once they got their body healed and they happened to stumble on something that was, you know, maybe against or that they used to be allergic to and they stumbled on it again, again and they didn't realize it was in that, they were like, they had such and such in it? Oh, I'm surprised I didn't flare up like I used to. That's because of all of that old sludge and, and toxins that they was probably full of have um, gone away. And so now since that's gone away, now they can digest that thing that they thought that, you know, that they were allergic to. So the sensitivity, basically, it could change over time. So maybe you could revisit it. And here we go. Um, we're going to talk about sugars or sweetness right quick since you mentioned that about the bees. Are there any healthy sugars or sweeteners for my blood type? Well, every blood type does have healthy sugars or sweeteners. Agave is kind of like across the board. I kind of like nobody needs to avoid agave. And so I mentioned that one a lot. And it also leaves beneficial bacteria inside of your gut after you consume it. The tackiness of it, kind of like it get pulls, you know, old fecal matter, parasites, yeast, waste, you know, the tackiness, leaving beneficial, like the prebiotic, beneficial bacteria in the gut. Um, agave nectar is like a honey-like sweetener made from the sap found on the core of the agave plant. So that is natural too, you know. Even out here, the little hummingbirds, they'll... They like, you know, to just go up to the little plants in the garden and just take the nectar from its source. And, I, and it's a beautiful thing to witness. I love me some honey, I mean some hummingbirds. So it's sweetener, um, it's sweeter rather than table sugar. So you kind of have to use less of it to get the same results. But they have trace amounts of calcium, iron, potassium, and magnesium inside of agave. And so... Um, it's also a lower glycemic index than table sugar. So it won't cause any spike in your blood sugar levels. And so it, that's why I feel like, it, you know, I think it's a beneficial one. But if we move on to raw local honey, the raw local honey actually, it, like I said, it has to be local to where you are at that time, your season, your place where you're roaming, right? It um, it contains ni uh, ni nicena. Nicin, I'm sorry, nicin, ri uh B6, free radicals, such as like your antioxidants, and um, thiamine. And some studies show that these, um, these vitamins and, and these nutrients help to alleviate seasonal allergies, just like how I was kind of like saying when you consume it, and the, you know, the bees, they, they around all of this pollen. And so you getting, you consuming it, it's almost like you putting it and letting it create a chemical reaction by it being on your tongue. And so now that chemical reaction that's on your tongue, you, you don't, you invincible with like the dust, um, sand storms that they be having out here in Arizona. So if you do that, when you first get here, if you just new to Arizona and you use the local honey, when it's monsoon season or dust sand season or whatever they call it see this thing out here it's almost like a a whole tornado it could be sunny outside and then all of a sudden you can't even see like a couple of feet in front of you so when that happens a lot of people are here you know for my first year last year i was sneezing and i was like i don't have allergies what is going on it's like it kind of it's hard to adjust to so the thing to do in that kind of situation is consume the local honey Get it in your system as soon as possible, and then you won't have to have that issue no more. But no more, because now your body, you didn't taught your body how to get used to or accustomed to that. So, if you're trying to lose weight, there's good news for you, honey. Also, it has a low um, glycemic index, and it helps to keep your sugars level in check. So, another thing about it is it's 50% sweeter than refined sugar, but you're gonna be satisfied with less of it. And so then we have maple syrup, which also can be used for some blood types. So maple syrup has actually health benefits about itself, promoting cardiovascular health and boosting um, the immune system. But maple syrup needs to be avoided by blood type O and blood type AB. 
Oh, in A B, you didn't hear that. Don't even consider no maple syrup. You stick to your agave. You could stick to maybe your local honey, but forget that. Um, then they have molasses, blackstrap molasses for blood type B is highly beneficial. It's a product of refining of sugar, of the sugar cane and the sugar beets. The juice squeezed from these two plants is boiled into a syrupy um, type mixture um, until that's formed, which sugar crystals are extracted from, right? This here molasses is, is really beneficial with magnesium, calcium, and antioxidants. Right? It's beneficial for blood type A and neutral for the rest of them. It's beneficial for Bs too. Bs and A and it's neutral for the rest of them. Right? So those are some questions that I thought really, were really, really good and would really, really help people. Corn is really not highly beneficial. That's another question people be asking about corn. The agriculture process that they put corn through <laughs> is it leads to it no longer being beneficial because it ended up having a high mold count content. And so I would highly suggest that you just do away with the corn. It's not highly beneficial for your blood type. And you know, to me, honestly, it don't even taste good. You buttering it down with margarine, which ain't highly beneficial for most blood types either. And putting a whole bunch of salt and stuff just to give it some substance of a taste like right so corn is another one that i've been questioning about you know why why not yeah you love agave good 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 what did you say about the bees sandra that they're in tuned that they are conscious that they are um, of another intelligence and that they are um ancestral that they are on the walls of the um, <laughs> by the um, hieroglyphics from our ancestors. So I wouldn't I wouldn't disown honey, especially for my blood type. I'm blood type B, and for the original gods, the O's, because I'm pretty sure the giants and Anaki that was drawing all of those things, or um, were O were of that bloodline, because that's the original people. And so as it pertains to um, as it pertains to eating for the blood type, let me, um, let's see. It's the inverted sugar for blood type O. It's the high fructose corn syrup for blood type O that needs to be, you know, avoided. It's the uh, <laughs> fructose for, for blood type O. It's the corn so um, starch for blood type O. But as far as um, the agave, for blood type O, and I'm just calling this out because they're the original people. Agave, the honey, and the um, molasses, that O3 not going to harm the O. And I'm saying it's because the Anunnaki gods have the bees on the wall up there. And so I, I just, I trust that my ancestors would have never put that on the wall if it was going to be um, harmful for the gods. I'm just, just that's just me drawing in my opinion there. So let me answer some of the easier questions. Um before i wrap up for those of you who are interested in knowing your blood type you go to elden and you go to amazon and enter elden e-l-d-o-n at home herbal kit and find out your blood type after you do that you check out my website the link is right here you have to put dot o-r-g salt of the earth pub dot o-r-g if you want to download your meal plan based upon your blood type why is this important because the foods that you eat create a chemical reaction called lectins and they are causing you sickness and disease and inflammation if you don't know what's in alignment with your blood type and what your forefathers, your ancestors ate before you, which there's nothing new underneath the sun. Um, uh, small, what does, oh, does this help with small irritable bowel? Is that intestinal bacterial? You got so many to oh, go on abbreviation. Intestinal bacterial. Yeah. Heck yeah. This is head to toe. Mental clarity, energy, good quiet good quality of sleep. Um <laughs> getting back in alignment with your circadian rhythm, your bowel movement, your skin, your everything. Everything. Because it all starts in the gut. That's why 70 to 80% of the immune system lies in the gut. 
the ability to absorb, you know, minerals, eliminate waste, all that happens in the gut. And this is why people can't see walking around with glasses. Not being ugly, I don't mean to trigger nobody, I'm just calling it what it is. This is why people have fluid field bumps on their face because now they have too many acids in the skin, which is the largest organ on the body. It's saying, look, I got to get out of here some way. She's head over heels in acids and mucus. Let's just come out of the skin. And so not only are we going to come out of the skin with six stick acne and fluid field bumps, we're going to come out of the skin and get rid of some of these parasites on her cheeks. So we'll come out on her face and give her a little thing called um, rosacea. Yeah, a little pink little cheeks and yeah. That's little little mites, little maggots, little parasites coming out. We could come out on a leg and she can call it eczema and be like, oh, I have dry skin. No, she's ascetic. She has parasites and acids. We're going to come out in the form of psoriasis. We got to come out. We got to come out. We got to come out because we can't come out of booty hole because guess what? That's clogged up. She won't even go to the bathroom. We're going to come out. We're going to come out this little tear duck right here. The morning she's going to have a whole bunch of mucus that's going to be dried up around her eye. We might even create a little, uh, little sack. Called, they call it a sigh or whatever. And then they say, oh, you must have been peeing outside. They give a crazy little examples of why you were full of mucus. Yeah. But, but meanwhile, your body, infinite intelligence, found a little hole out right here. And so, oh, there's a hole right here, guys. Let's come out of here because we got to get some of this stuff up out of there to save her life. So I don't care that she's waking up and now her eyes pink. I don't care. I don't care. Get out there. Go out there. There's a hole. We got to come out. Here's a hole right here. We got to come out here. And now we're going to be draining a bunch of mucus. Here's a hole right here. We can let some worms out here, some parasites out here. You see what I'm saying? It's going to come out. Oh, wait. Wait, there's pores in the skin. Here's some holes in the pores of the skin on the scale. We could come out here. We're going to be white. Mucus and acid is going to be white. So we're going to be white flaky dandruff uncontrollably. Cornflake just, just mobbing up on our head because we got so much acid in this area. And we got to come out. Oh, yeah, let's come out. If you begin to call it things what it is, we can stop being full of crap. If we begin to eat highly beneficial foods for our blood type, we'll stop being full of crap and we'll escape all of these sicknesses and diseases when we learn how to let that stuff up out. Thank you. Hey, Sandra. Yeah, you're so welcome, Sandra. Um, let's see. Hello. What's good for leaky gut? Uh, eat you right for your blood type. Every, everything on the list, everything on your highly beneficial food list, the link is in the bio. All of them. Oh, pay attention to your fruit drinks. That's on the list. Pay, pay attention to your teas. But most importantly, pay attention to your void list. So you, you're saying, um, AB. You're saying, AB, what's good for my, um, my leaky gut? You say, okay, here's the thing where you really need to know. What caused your leaky gut? What got you in that place that you're in? Okay, all types of vinegars. So maybe your salad dressings, maybe they don't aren't that user friendly for you because all salad dressings have some type of vinegar in them. Maybe your Worcestershire sauce that maybe you're using for cooking. Yeah, maybe um soy sauce, just the sauce itself. That's a condiment maybe that you could look out for. This one here is really, really popular that may be causing and leading into these issues you have in high fructose corn syrup. Maybe you can stay away from that. And dextrose, that be it for your potato chips. Maybe you can need to leave those alone. Then we could move over to some peppers, the red flakes and black peppers. That irritates the lining of your gut. So that'll put a nice little hole up in there. So maybe you need to know that. Really, really important. Allspice, yeah, maybe you need to leave that um, um, shake or seasoning alone. And then when we move over to your beverages and teas, maybe coffee yeah maybe that's a little bit too much you should have really avoid coffee because that's a common thing that people like Ooh, so soft drinks you drink those oh those are just a rip you to shreds shreds right there soft drink any kind even if you get diet kind so that's why it's so important to know or get the list because you need to know what you need to avoid first 
then you begin to eat the highly beneficial things. Orange juice, you know, the American diet, they like to have orange juice for all of the blood types. But orange is, no orange juice is really highly beneficial for any blood type. So the orange juice for your blood type is something that you need to avoid too. Mangoes, you know, if you just want to just wild out and just eat all the fruits, just like some of the vegans do. Well, mangoes, one that the vegans as an AB, the AB vegans, they really need to leave that alone. And then we go over to um, some fruits that the, um, the AB vegans need to leave, leave alone, like persimmon, persimmon the um, loquat, the um, dewberry, coconut, pomegranate, yeah, prickly pear, yeah. Leave that alone too. You even have vegetables as an AB that you need to leave alone. Jalapenos, you know, because that's going to irritate you because you get this shit from your A part of you. A's can't ho tolerate any, any type of spices, neither can you. And then pickles, all kind of pickles. You like pickles? Guess what? You got to leave them alone because they irritate your stomach too. Aloe vera, olive, avocado, um, black olives. You got to leave that alone. So all of these things, if you consume any of these things, all of these things led up for you to get into the state where you're experiencing the disease and disharmony. And then there's teff, grains, that you got to leave alone. There's um, llama bean flour that you got to leave alone. Chickpeas, you know, if you want on a healthy journey, they'll put chickpea, they got chickpea potato chips. They got chickpea um, beans. But you, you, you get inflamed from chickpeas, so you got to leave them alone too. You got to know the beans. Lima bean, butter bean, black bean, black eye peas, all of them as an AB. You got to leave that alone. So are you doing all of these things too? Got to do those things. Because if you keep doing those things, the whole, you know, the gut, the integrity of the gut going to constantly get inflamed. Yeah. Your gut going to stay in an aesthetic range. And so when we're talking about inflammation in the gut, we're talking about that thing getting tight. We were just yesterday, we were talking about Ozempic, a needle that the diabetics would stick themselves up in the stomach with and the stomach will go night night. Well, guess what? Guess what? The stomach will go night night and now their stomach hurt and they ain't using the bathroom and they got constipation or maybe diarrhea and they sick and they feeling miserable because they chose to stick themselves with that, right? They chose something outside of the herbs that are for the heat of the nation. Well, guess what? When you eat these foods, that's the same thing happening to you too. Any blood type I'm talking about now. Your stomach going night night. Pretty much it's so inflamed that it's just on fire that it kind of like contracts. And so and so it don't even want to release and, and let things expel. It's contract because it's just in, on, in so much pain and, and on fire. And so now your stomach is kind of like night night. Because it's sore. Just because you're eating the stuff that your stomach or your blood is has interacting with the food and it's creating this inflammatory response throughout the entire body. So this is why them acids build up and why them holes end up being there in people's gut. And so even with that in mind, they, they, they still have um, pumpkin seeds, poppy seeds, sesame brother or tahini that the ABs need to leave alone. And then we keep, if we keep on going to the oils, we got coconut oil, corn oil, lord oil, margarine, sesame seed oil, sunflower oil. Some of these oils are in potato chips and your little snacks that you like to consume. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then they got cheeses that the ABs need to leave alone, like, um, and dairy things, American cheese, buttermilk, butter, ice cream. Can't have this so-called thing that we call a treat nowadays that's full of high fructose corn syrup and, 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 and sugars and milks that a lot of the blood types can't even consume. So then we, we keep on going. It's, it ain't over. So just make sure you're getting rid of these things because this is going to keep on. You're going to keep on having the same experience. So we keep on going. We have some seafood. We got crab. We got clam. We got strip um, bass. We got bluegill bass that the blood type AB needs to stay away from. That ain't it. Lobster. You think you're doing something all nice and fancy when you go out for lobster? Not as an AB. You ain't doing nothing fancy. You're spending a whole lot of money to put your body in this ease. Eel. Yellowfish. Yellowtail. Sea trout. Steelhead trout. Octopus. Oyster. Salmon roe. Shrimp. Yeah, smoked heron, frog. I don't know who eat frog, Lord have mercy. 
flounder. Yeah. And then, then you got, then you got your meats. You got turtle, you got veal, you got moose. <laughs> you got horse. Lord have mercy. Who eating a horse? Well, if you eat McDonald's, you're probably eating it. Uh, duck, beef, bear, bone soup, chicken being the worst one as an AB. You got to avoid chicken too, just like the bees do. Cornish hen, bear, beef. So now that you know that, how about you get your meal plan for the highly beneficial things and you stay away from those things that I just shared with you. Because if you keep consuming those things, you will keep continue to having the suffering as far as sickness is concerned. Because you, you, your body, your blood, and this chemical reaction will keep on happening every time you put it to your mouth. And the doctors ain't going to tell you this. That's why they don't really tell you what your blood type is. They ain't going to ask you, well, how you think, how you think you have parasites? Let's get, get in there and get a good parasite cleanse every six months. No, that'll cut your repeat visits down, especially when you begin to know the anti-parasitic things like the alchemist oil. Once you begin to know things like the sustained detox, you ain't going to be going to no doctor. Once you get rid of the, that waste by cleaning your body at a cellular level, the doctors ain't going to tell you about no parasite cleanse. They ain't going to tell you about, let's see, what type of blood are you? Well, you know you benefit from this here and you don't benefit from that. That might be messing you up. They ain't going to do that. They don't do that. They study medicine. You got to study you. That's your job. You got to study and get to know yourself. Good evening. How you doing? Yeah. So, um, yeah, no canned foods. All right, let's see, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see, Josh. Josh, it's not. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No, don't do that, please. Don't, don't, don't do that. Don't talk, don't, don't do that. Maybe y'all getting that from the, um, this idea that did something went viral with the pink Himalayas. So, no, 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 no. No, no, it's, it's, it's not bad. Pinky Malaya salt is not bad. Y'all be ready to dump on little, little things that go viral. No, it's not. Pinky Malaya sea salt and gray salt sea salt is not. They both do, they're both highly beneficial in different ways, but they're both beneficial. If you want to stay away from any type of salt, you stay away from white that has been stripped of all of its minerals, but never stay away from a salt that has color or hue. Color and hue represents its minerals in life force. Just like the black and the white man, if we go outside, we will experience that sun, that, that, that ray of light, that lux energy at different frequencies. The white or the um, lower level um, melanated man that has a different type of um, melanin production in their body will experience it and they would not be able to see because they don't have the melanin in their eye, nor do they have the extra melanin production in their skin to be able to withstand that, that sun because it's of a higher frequency. But the brown eyed being, which is more often than not a darker hued melanated being, which, you know, the lighter hues, they sometimes could have the brown eye, but they, as far as their vision, could tolerate the sun better they would be able to see and they don't actually need them sunglasses the lighter hued being would need the sunglasses because he often has the blue eye then as it pertains to that sun <laughs> the skin of the darker hue like i'm kind of brownie caramel caramel type if you want to say i can tolerate the sun but in my right now since i'm healthy i'm at my healthiest place I am mean, living in the desert. I can go out in that desert. I'm talking about 114 and I can sit out there for hours and hours and hours because my health is up to par and I'm not toxic within. But if there was a darker hued being that was in tune with their body, He's darker, he or she darker hued than me. I'm talking about the purple black ones, the original gods, beautiful, pure African type toned skin. If we go and sit out, they would be even less affected by this 114 desert heat 
because they can tolerate it more because they have more melanin inside of them. So it's very important that you pay attention to this here as it pertains to your food having hue or color. That hue or color is a life force. Hence, colored peppers, they're high in silica. Silica is actually the cousin of carbon. That's why I often teach to eat all color peppers when you are um, cooking or eating your food. All color peppers will help your melanin not be so toxic in your body because it has silica. And now your melanin will be, in, be able to be the healer that it always has been to heal your body and to protect you from harmful rays of the sun and protect you from toxins within. Pink Himalayan sea salt and gray Celtic sea salt has also some inorganic compounds yet that it is made of, but the good is gonna always outweigh the bad as it pertains to the fact that it has electrolytes, it has magnesium that your body needs, and it has beneficial things like silica inside of it too. And it has the ability to be a saline solution inside of your body, reducing mucus in the body too. The one and only that you need to be staying away from is the one that is white. Going back to your food for most blood types. The white salt has been stripped of all of its minerals, leaving you two minerals behind, causing you high blood pressure. Leave that alone. And when you leave it alone, you pay attention to those big mixed blends, those mixed shake seasons that have white toxic salt in it. Because it is a no-go. It is no good for you. So, when I say that, I'm saying, and I'm going to jump over here now to the A, to the A's. I'm going to jump over to the A's, and they have a bunch of white things that they need to leave alone too. Then we could jump over to the O's, like potatoes. That's white, but the O, they need to leave that alone because that's mucus forming. So, everybody has something that has a white to it that's going to be toxic to that particular bloodline because it lacks mineral life force and substance for them. But do not say that about pink Himalayan salt and gray salt and sea salt. That is so far from the truth. Pink Himalayan sea salt was my go-to salt for years and it helped change my life. I've depended upon it more in the beginning. Now I'm at a place in my journey where I love my Celtic gray salt, but I will never, ever throw out my pink Himalayan sea salt. Never. Because they both have two different purposes. My pink is higher in my potassium, and potassium is really, really good for the kidneys, right? But my gray is high in magnesium. So I would, I would tell the people that have like um, um, cancer, that have like diabetes, to consume more of the gray Celtic salt than the pink because magnesium is needed in every organ in the body and magnesium helps the body to detox. But those two serve a great purpose to healing people. If you have no salt, if you have white salt and pink salt only, I would say definitely use your pink. Definitely. And I would not call it toxic at all. I would not. Now you go get, you go get something that's probably, you know, been handheld, you know, messed, it, messed around with, you know, by man and, you know, kind of manipulated and some knockoff pink. Yeah, maybe that. But when it is really um, taken care of and, and, and not processed, it has value. It has minerals. I wouldn't lie to you. Okay, I went on a tangent. I got 99 comments over here, but I didn't, I, I didn't really care for that. Y'all be talking to, y'all be talking to, um, to, to each other you said you want to do what on the stove oh i don't know i don't know what what y'all talking about now i don't know um i did don't know that we could eat oh okay okay yeah 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 some of some of the things that's deemed um miss grateful is genetically modified by others is is on your list for example let me go to it right now you are you, um you're a i don't mean i don't mean c list and see that when i'm talking about genetically modified in this aspect i mean like maybe like the dr sabers of the world you know um let me see if i can find something on your list here 
that I that I, I think about when I think about y'all because y'all from you know y'all from Asian culture kind of like and they 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 eat different. So let's say um, for example, it's not your beans; it's probably your um, vegetables and your fruit. So let me look at some of your vegetables and your fruit. Okay, broccoli for example, broccoli for a. I could have thought about this. I remember that. Broccoli for A, if you come up underneath Dr. Sabre's teaching, it has no minerals, like, right? It's like supposed to be um, genetically modified, right? Right? Underneath his teaching. Not because of it being seedless or seeded, but underneath his teaching, it's considered GMO. But I need some water. The top of my, my, my mouth is tangling. Cause I've been running until six o'clock this morning doing consultations. <laughs> but broccoli, for example, is supposed to be, you know, no minerals. It's cheap. And a lot of Dr. Tabby people done ran away from it. So the Dr. Tabby eggs up in here, you'll be surprised when they see that broccoli is highly beneficial. That's what I mean by the so-called GMO being misled that we could eat. I didn't mean in that essence the seedless one. Don't eat the seedless one. Always go for the seeded one. I'm just talking about the language of the others, you know, other people before us. Just like the Dr. Sabi Oils, you know, as it pertains to red clover, yellow dock, and burdock root. It's supposed to be beneficial, but the old blood types should not be consuming those herbs to clean their blood because their blood does not connect with that particular those particular herbs. But everybody different you know and everybody believes certain things so if you really believe it i'm hopeful if you really believe it it'll work for you to still do but if you have that doubt in your subconscious mind and if you program the hear the thoughts and picking up the thoughts of the other people it ain't gonna work for you it ain't gonna work you're gonna get you gonna be the one that gets sick when 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 you consume that thing yeah Eat those watermelon seeds. Yeah, you swallow the seed too. Oh, I'm really behind because I've been talk stopped talking about watermelon. I juiced two seeded watermelon yesterday. Oh, oh, I want to get that. I'm so happy you typed that because I forgot how to spell it. It's N. Is that the thing? I got my computer right here. Let me read you. N-A. M-A. Because somebody told me about that juice. So that's that expensive thing. You got J too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. That's Josh again. Yeah, I want to get one of them suckers. And you got the J2. Thank you, Josh. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't find out how to get back to the thing. Yeah, that's a little expensive sucker. Cold pressed juice and nut milk. Yep, yeah, that's it. I'm going to get me one of them. I'm going to get me one of them things. Okay, let me get back down here and get caught up. Uh... Oh, y'all talking to each other about salts and stuff. Y'all go ahead on. Go ahead on. Do your thing. Let me get to the bottom. Are there more comments down here? Let's see. Some Thanks for joining. Thanks for the follows. Thanks for the likes. I appreciate y'all. Uh, no. Honey is not like regular sugar. No. Date syrup is good. Yeah. Dates. And the date syrup actually, you know, for certain blood types, it's, it's um beneficial for beneficial bacteria. Prebiotic too. Yeah. Um... They sneak corn into everything. Yeah, they really do. They really do sneak corn into everything. That's why you got to kind of like prepare your own meals and be mindful of that. Uh, oh, y'all talking to each other. Y'all talking to each other. Let me go down here. Uh, my question is about wheat. Is about what hard? Oh, oh y'all talking to each other. Um... What about stevia's stevia no go? No, no, okay. Yeah, we got a full house in here. Uh, oh, hey, <laughs> I don't know if we really pay attention to hey, hey, full house. That's what's up. That's what's up. I don't be paying attention to the numbers. I can sit here and actually talk. I, I used to in the beginning of my journey, I used to sit here on, on YouTube when I first started in 2013 just talking and I, I I made it a mental note not to pay attention to the numbers because guess what there was no number it was zero but it was my passion and so I was talking in the room and I just made I then I kind of like 
don't do that no more. Look up there. I I I'll do it every now and then when I see them 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 lights ain't high. <laughs> yeah. I eat a lot of potato chips. So with potato chips, you gotta make sure that you're getting the, that the salt in this chip is saying sea salt. Eat those kind of potato chips. With potato chips, you gotta make sure that you don't have that dextrose and that malt dextrin in those potato chips because that's really, really hard on the kidneys. Oh, and that's uh, Stephanie, the same person that was earlier talking about that. See there, Stephanie? You gotta know what you need to be avoiding. You gotta know. Um, what's the name of the juicer? In a, I'm sorry, y'all y'all can't see these comments over here. I guess it's pronounced Nama N A M A J two. The Nama J two is what Josh got on here over on here on this other page, and I wrote it down because I gotta buy it. It's kind of expensive, but I juice a lot, so it's worth it to me because you could do the milk, cold press, and cold press juices. Because you know you can make milk actually out of like you know walnuts, uh, any nut. You can make walnut milk, hemp seed milk, you know, whatever nut you use, or, or that's highly beneficial for your blood type. So pecan, should I try to make me some pecan milk? It's really just like water. Like for, I, I made hemp seed milk before and that's really, really good. And I love how foamy and stuff it get, you know, it really like the illusion of fresh back in the day milk. I don't know if milk nowadays still do that. You don't leave a little white coat around your lip because I ain't have regular milk in a long, long, long time. But I make it with like water, hemp seeds, and then I'll put some dates up in there as a sweetener. Blend it in one of those commercial um, blenders and then I'll have to strain it. But that's why I wanted to do this here, um, this here cold press and nut milk thing called Nama J2. Now I don't have to strain it, I'm hopeful, because it's expensive enough. Josh, you, you ain't got to strain no more. <laughs> I'm hopeful that it'll do all that. Uh huh. Did you say the name of the juicer? Yeah, your screen froze. It's called Nama. I'm thinking that's how you pronounce it. N A M A J 2. N A M A J 2. Just Google it on, um, you know, and find out about more about it. So yeah, coffee is toxic. No, see there? There we go. That's you again, Josh. No, Josh, you can't just be wilding out like that and just saying those kind of things. It's not, Josh. To you and maybe to your blood type it is, but it's not for everybody. It's not. Yeah, old type. You are old, Josh. Oh, yeah, you need. You don't need to be fooling with no, no coffee. Yeah, because you have a whole bunch of hydrochloric acid. But it, but it is not. It is not. It's not for everybody. It's not. Coffee is actually highly beneficial for blood type A, for example. It's not for everybody, Josh. You, can't, you gotta not do that now. You gotta not. I was telling them that all things are energy, frequency, and vibration. And everybody's vibrating at a different frequency. So coffee is not toxic for everybody. Blood type A, for example, Coffee is highly beneficial for them. So that is not true. Okay? So don't believe that coffee is toxic for everybody. It is not. It is not. That's not true. And so we gotta get get out of the get out of the idea. We gotta get out of the idea of this so-called everybody. Mm-mm. I used to drink a lot of coffee. Yeah, you like them? Good for you. I'm hopeful that they beneficial for your blood type because I don't know which one you are. <sighs> okay? So, um, yeah. So, I'm trying to catch up. I'm trying to catch up. Uh, learn how to fast. Yeah, very, very important because when you begin to fast, guess what's happening? You replenishing those white blood cells your body is renewing at a cellular level. Yeah, you're healing that body. Your body go into detox mode. User 7837. Oh, okay, you're old. There's some O's in this house. There's some O's in this house. My sustained detox, highly beneficial for blood type O. Giving O's the iron that they need is the highest form of iron. Giving O's the iodine they need for their thyroid issues. Giving the O's 
the um, beneficial bacteria in the gut and cleaning out that old yeast because a lot of them olds done been walling out with wheat and then put out their little hydrochloric acid. So it, it helps them with their digestive enzymes and resets them at a cellular level. It's called sustained detox. Okay, I get it. Dr. Saber rules. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was talking about, Miss Grateful. Not not the other thing. Because them Dr. Sebi people, and I love Dr. Sebi and respect and look at him as pops. But them Dr. Sebi supporters be like, no, because you don't understand. Because we can't. We. No, it ain't no we. It ain't no we when we all vibrate at a different frequency. We can't put everybody in one pot. We can't. We can't. So, yeah. 500 plus. Oh, yeah? They had a lot of people up in here like that? Oh, okay. It's benefited old broccoli. It's beneficial old. So it's, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yep. Yep. Um, the, I repeated the name of the juice a couple of times. So you got that. Your screen froze. Just made walnut milk. Oh, you did? Oh, it, does it taste good? I know hemp milk is so delicious. I don't think I did walnut milk before. I think I fell in love with the hemp and I just kept doing the hemp. But walnut, you could do walnut, pecan, hemp, milk. Oh, I can't wait to get the juice. Now, now I'm going to order the juice when I get over here. Uh-huh. Yeah. I'm a type B, understanding. I'm old and I saw a few things with wheat on my diet sheet. And also some things that has um, lectin. Like what, for example? In moderation, what, what you talk about the oats? You talk about the oats? Because you can consume oats. You can consume oats. I put that on the oats. I remember that. Um, here's the thing. Oh, and you talking about maybe tomatoes? Yeah, because I put that on the, on the diet sheet. Because guess what? Tomatoes are actually neutral to oats. Actually, they're neutral. And oats is a high, is a high, still beneficial because it's still providing the body. See, the thing with the neutrals, oats and tomatoes, it's both neutrals for oats. And so the thing with the neutrals is that they do provide some, like I said, when I was doing questions and answers, some minerals. So together, it's part of the 100% of all that you need. You can manipulate them because like an oat, and every time I listed it, I was manipulating it, 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 it with what I added to it. So you can manipulate things to make them of a higher frequency than which they are, like I said earlier. So you're manipulating it, so I think maybe I put it on maybe a sandwich. But the seasonings in, in, in the oils is re manipulating, for example, the tomato, increasing it. And I'm not saying, I never did say have a tomato salad, have a bulk of it. When you have in this particular meal, th that is a limited amount. That for oat, what it calls, you just ease and disharmony. Also with oats, I did not say that you eat that every day in the morning for breakfast. I did not say that. Because the limited amounts that you, of, of something that's neutral, which is a, oats is a high neutral, it does provide one thing. Read my logic behind that was silica. It provides silica, which is a cousin back again to, of carbon. So it, uh, oat with silica, high content of silica, that's why I put it and listed on the old um, meal plan because I want them to be able to protect their melanin. Everything that I put that on the meal plans, I was actually strategically planning. It took me about six days where I wasn't even eating and, and pretty much focused on that. Cause I don't eat every day anyway, so don't don't be feeling sorry for me. I ain't say that to say that. <laughs> but I was working on that because it's my passion. I didn't even go nowhere, hence why I had a whole bird nest on my call after the six days was over with. Cause I was just focused on making sure I was strategically planning their meals, their breakfast, lunches, and their dinner correctly, and making sure that they only consume it so many times, and making sure I didn't list the large quantities of things. It should not harm you, none of those things in those small quantities. It ain't like the day before you stumbled upon this here that everybody wasn't eating things that was causing them to be on fire. So that little bit that's on that meal plan ain't gonna have you in flames when you have a plethora of other things that's got you into balance. 
but you can manipulate things like that for example another example externally coconut oil i sell coconut oil actually i sell coconut oil product like right now right here here this here this here is a coconut oil it's a lotion right coconut oil isn't the highest beneficial oil right but I've manipulated the energy of this oil by adding key lime and lemon to manipulate the energy of it. That way it's not a bad saturated fatty oil because now I've gotten rid of or manipulated the energy so much that the lemon and the lime is going to penetrate into people's skin when you use it. So I was, maybe you don't understand my thought process. But I, I I was paying attention to that. I even wrote it in a um in a description, you know that that I put that on there. And I know that some people think that it's gonna set them on fire. But I I'm not gonna have you on fire, baby. I promise. Yay for coffee! Do you drink coffee, Miss Grateful? That's a beautiful thing. I drank coffee one day in my life. Well, years ago I tasted it and I thought it was nasty. But one day when I was actually moving out here, we all grouped up and to take turns, you know, to drive from New Orleans, Louisiana to Arizona. It was a 24 hour drive, but it took 32 hours. And everybody had a turn and nobody wanted to stop but me because I was fatigued, right? But we went to a gas station and they were like, here, drink you some coffee. I was like, what is this stuff going to do to me? And they're like, it's going to take the edge off. Now, I never had really drunk coffee before, right? But baby, when I drunk that coffee, I was ready. Boy, I was like, I ain't know, I ain't know them people at work was on drugs and stuff. <laughs> Boy, that, that coffee got me right. I drove the rest of the way. I drove the last um, five hours. I was like, I'm good. I'm good. I feel great. <laughs> I guess I was like a virgin of coffee. But when I got it in my system, it sure helped me wake myself up and help me on that road because everybody um, wants to um, keep going, which is, this is not the safest thing to be doing, no. But I, I did it, and I made it home, and I made it home safe. But I'm a blood type um, B, and coffee for me is actually neutral. So it's nothing I need to avoid, but I just, I just don't consume it because I, I used to see the people at work shaking the cup and stuff and, and talking about, oh, I can't start my day without my coffee. Where's the coffee? And getting mad at the administrative assistant if we was out of coffee. I was like, oh, I won't get it on that thing. Because your people are like, they, they tripping out. <laughs> Kombucha for your blood type? No. um That's a bit much. If I recall, you are a A, right? Kombucha, that's Wait a minute, wait, 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 um, Miss B and so because I, I'm thinking since you are A, I'm thinking about that, um, oh no, 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 you are A, right? No, no, that fermenting process of that, it could irritate the lining of your stomach, yeah, it, be, it being so, you know, ascetic. That's the one with the, that's like almost like the um, one with the mother, right? The, if, the kombucha, you make that with the mother, right? And then it becomes ascetic, right? Kind of like an apple cider vinegar kind of like thing. Yeah. So you got to stay away from vinegar, pickled things, fermented things. Um, um, so that ain't going to serve you. It's going to irritate you. Um, I was a food list for old. Would it be mailed? No, it comes instantly. It comes instantly in your email. Check your email. There's an email receipt. And so when you open it up, when you open up your email, the receipt for your purchase is going to say the amount you paid and it's going to say blood type O. Click on the words blood type O and it's going to open up. The words blood type O is actually a link. 